if you miss Sunday school, it uh, starts at 10 o'clock. We have got some wonderful Sunday school teachers, and if you come out, you will receive a blessing. All right, we've got a few announcements this morning. Um, there will be a wedding shower for Lucas and Kira at Ferguson Baptist Church, March 18th at 1.30. You know that. All right. Uh, today, after services, we if you want to be a part of the Easter play, or if you want to just help with the chaperoning, um, there will be a play practice meeting right after church services this morning. All right, do we have, oh, today we open up our revival. That will go through Wednesday. Uh, tonight's service will start at 6.30. The rest of the week will be at 7 o'clock. All right, do we have any other announcements? Um, when is recovery rally? Uh, this coming Saturday at 5 o'clock. All right, recovery rally this Saturday. Just the buns. So, just bring in hot dog buns between now and April first. Anything else? All right. If not, uh, do we have any prayer requests this morning? I just want to thank the church for all the prayers that went out for my mother during her uh, double bypass. She's recovering very well. So. God is good. I thank all you guys. She went in to have just a stint done, and then ended up being major clogged arteries, and she had to go and get a double bypass. So just appreciate all the prayers. Just continue to give prayers during her recovery and healing process. But uh, like I said, everything's going great. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
during the recovery. All right, anyone else? Yes. Pray for Nana. Pray for Nana. Janie Ham in our prayers. It's good to have Ed with us this morning, Ed. Yeah. Good to see Ed. Let's continue to remember Ed in our prayers. Anyone else? Oh, yeah. Why is it so dumb? Thank you. 
Anyone else? All right, or not? Do we have any unspoken prayers? Brother Chad, do you care to lead us in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask you to forgive me of my sins. I thank you for such a great turnout today, and I want to come to your house and worship in your name. I thank you for giving us so many blessings. I thank you most of all for sending your son Jesus Christ on the cross for our sins. I just want to ask that you be with the sick, be with those in need, be with all these prayer requests, and be with the unspoken requests. As you continue to be with our church, be with the congregation, be with our country. I just ask that you just lead, guide, and direct us to give us your request. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Nancy has her special for us. Please pray for me and listen to these words and ask yourself this question. What will you do with Jesus? Shout, shout. Amen. Let's hear you do it. Say amen. 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 Well, that's good too. Ric Flair would have went, woo! Amen. Amen. woo! A little deeper than that. But I, I got you. Listen, the gentleman that's starting to come up has been a mentor of mine for many years. Thank God for him. I remember one sermon that he preached many, many years ago, and I, I hope he still has it. But it was a visitor from hell, I believe, or something along that lines. And guys, that was the proverbial nail for me. That, he, that just got drove the night that I got saved. I, it's been many years ago, but I, Brother Dale was down in revival that week, and I went back and I prayed. And I, I've asked God to remind me of that, but he came through the back doors that day, and he preached Don't one of the most out. prolific sermons that there, I Don't believe. Don't let it out. Huh? Don't let it out. 
Come over here and stand by me. I might have to watch you. <laughs> Amen. I'm just kidding. I, was, I was just going to go this. It was one of the most prolific sermons I ever had. It was life changing. Amen. Do you like life changing Amen. moments in life? Today can be one. Amen. And Brother Dale is a fine man of God. I thank God for him. Been a friend of mine for many years. Friend of our families. I am so proud and honored to have him with us here today. Let's give him and the Lord a hand. Amen. <laughs> Does everyone have a piece of corn? Okay, is anyone missing a piece of corn? Uh, we're missing a few there, if someone can get them. I do still preach that message. I, uh, I asked uh, Brother Ike Huckabee when I first surrendered to preach, I said, Brother Huckabee, can you preach the same message more than once? He said, if it's worth preaching once, it's worth preaching again. Amen. And isn't that true? Uh, <clears throat> That song, I'd never heard it sung, but I appreciated it because in a sermon or two, I quote that stanza. What will you do with Jesus? Neutral you cannot be because one day you'll be asking, what will he do with me? And I ask you right now, would he say enter in? If you were to die, would he say enter in? Or would he say depart from me, you workers of iniquity? I never knew you. So what would it be for you today if you were to die? Preacher made it to heaven. He'd been there for a couple months. He got upset. Found out that a New York cab driver had a place of higher significance in heaven than he did. did. He runs up to Peter and he's complaining. Now Peter, this is not fair. I worked, I labored, I did funerals, I toiled, I visited the hospitals, I preached. And this cab driver's got a place of higher significance in heaven than I have. Bless the Lord. Peter said, we reward according to results here. Got a question for you, preacher. What happened when you preached? He said, well, I have to admit, sometimes they fell asleep. What do you think happened when this New York cab driver drove? <laughs> I don't know. What happened, Peter? Not only did they stay awake, but they prayed also. <laughs> Amen. Reminds me of when Millie and I were either in New York or Chicago on a business trip, and we were in the cab, got off the plane, got in the cab, and, I mean, he was putting the metal to the pedal or whatever, however that phrase goes. He was in and out of those 18-wheelers and those viaducts. And I'd already started witnessing to him about the Lord. And uh, my wife scoots over in the middle of the back seat. She's terrified. <laughs> and this guy looked in the mirror and he said, Ma'am, keep the faith. Keep the faith. <laughs> now, he knew the lingo... But he did not know the Lord. Come so on. I don't want you leaving here today knowing the lingo without knowing the Lord. Amen. That's right. Now everyone has a grain of corn. I like to have an imagination. Amen. <laughs> now if this grain of corn had a mind to think, this grain of corn could think, if I give myself to a milk cow... I can't produce a gallon of milk. A matter of fact, I can't even produce a pint of milk. And then this grain of corn could continue to think, if I give myself to a beef cow, I can't produce a T-bone steak. A matter of fact, I can't even produce a hamburger. So this grain of corn could think, what value do I have? What worth do I have? Doesn't the enemy cause us to feel that way so much of the time? Amen. That's right. What's my purpose? Don't we sometimes feel like a gun wrapper on the wheel rolling out of town? Or we feel like the strand of hair that the wind's carrying along? What value and what purpose do I really have right. in life? That's right. And doesn't the enemy defeat us? Yes. Now this grain of corn has one of two choices. I'm not going to tell you what they are now. But hang on to it. We'll find out later, okay? Amen. So hold on to your grain of corn. 
Now I want us to pull up a slide. Let's see if we can, whoops, let me back up right here we go. James, the half-brother of Jesus, said, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Amen. Behold the husbandman, or the farmer, who waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Amen, brother. Until he receives the early and the latter rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, because the coming of the Lord draws nigh, Amen. draws near. That's right. Now, be patient. Let's think about the farmer. The farmer lives with three things. First of all, he lives with an expectation of the harvest. Right. How many of you are going to have a garden this spring? Okay, I've got a raised garden bed. I, now, I tell you, I used to have neighbors, and they moved another house over from me, and uh, it was Chance's mom and dad. I'll give her more credit than I do his dad. And uh, I could just go steal whatever I wanted to out of their garden, and they raised a big garden. But uh, I tell you, they would give us some stuff sometimes, and I appreciated that. But I guarantee you that as you plant that garden, you till that soil, you're going to anticipate a harvest, and you're thinking about that uh, peaches and cream corn and those green beans and those cucumbers, don't you? Yes. So see, a farmer must live with an expectation of the harvest. That's right. But the second thing that they must live with is an anticipation of hard work. That's right. Now, we don't have this year that much, but uh, we have some friends in South Dakota, just below the North Dakota border. We went up to visit with them, and they have 5,000 acres, 3,000 tillable, and 2,000 where they ran their livestock. They had 11 kids. They brought seven of them to visit with us and spent that night in our house and uh, did some things with them. The last I uh, had record, they had 50-something grandchildren. Wow. They're Gothardites, okay? And uh, I, I'll explain that to you if you want me to afterwards, what that means. But anyway, great people. But I guarantee you they live with... Uh, anticipation of hard work, don't they? Amen. Now I want you to know the Christian faith is not easy. Mm -hmm. And laboring for the Lord is not easy. That's right. A pastor, it is intense on him emotionally. Evangelism is more intense physically because of the travel and the number of times that you preach. This makes my third week in a row that I'll be in revivals. I'll be preaching next Sunday. The week after, I'll be preaching another revival, and I'll be doing a men's business meeting in Princeton, Kentucky on Friday. So it never ends. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. Amen. But see, right. it, we live with an, ex, uh, an uh, expectation of the harvest and an anticipation of the hard work. That's right. C.S. Lewis said, I warn you, if you're thinking of becoming a Christian, it will take the whole of you. Amen. And if you're going to serve the Lord, it's going to take the whole of you. But what does the Bible tell us? Do not be weary in well-doing, right. for in due season you shall reap if you do not faint. That's right. Amen. And what does the Bible say? He that sows in the summer is a wise son, but he that does not sow is a son that brings shame. And church, sometimes I fear that we're bringing shame. Because what did Jesus say? The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray you therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he will send out, and in the Greek it's an emphatic, thrust out labors into the vineyard. Amen. Have we been praying? I, I talk to pastors all the time, and let me tell you, it's, it's sad that there's no young people surrendering to preach hardly today or to be missionaries. And that's what we need. We need to have prayer meetings praying, God, send them out, thrust them out Amen. into the vineyard. That's right. Now, you live with an expectation of the harvest and anticipation of the hard work. But we also live with the uh, celebration during the harvest. Amen. 
They that sow in tears shall come again with rejoicing, bringing their sheaves or the harvest with them. Yeah. Now, if you notice, it says, and they're patient until they receive the early rains and the latter rains. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to understand in Israel, and I just got back from Israel off of my sixth trip, the middle of February, okay? Tremendous trip. But anyway, the early rains in Israel are the fall rains. And the latter rains are the spring rains. Reverse for us. In our Western mindset, we miss so much in Scripture because we do not understand it. But now let's think about the early rains. Let's think about the prophet Jeremiah. That man ministered and labored for the Lord 60 years and did not have one convert. Not one. Wouldn't that take a tenacity? Amen. And then think about William Carey, the father of the modern mission movement, stood up in the associational meeting years ago and said, God wants to send me to India. And the moderator said, sit down, young man, and shut up. If God chooses to save the heathen, he'll do it without your help or mine either. Isn't that tragic? Mm -hmm. But William Carey went to India. And you've got to understand the caste system. We see some of it as they move here. And I, I try to witness to them. They're tough, okay? But he went. He had physical problems. His wife became insane. Children that died. The building where he was translating the scriptures into Sanskrit, guess what? It burned down with all of his work, but he never gave up. Amen. You talk about not seeing many early rains. He didn't. Adrenaden Judson went to Burma and ministered six years and 11 months before he saw the first convert. Lord bless. Now you talk about tenacity. Amen, brother. Now That's God right. knows I need some early rains. My sister, and by the way, she teaches at Southwest High School chemistry and physics. Any of you go to Southwest? No? She got all the brains, okay? You know Lana? <laughs> yeah. You what? Did you know she is my sister? You look just like her. Oh, I look just like her. No, she looks just like me. A matter of fact, a matter of fact, I find her former students and her current students, and I'll say, now which one's older? And they'll say, her, she is. But I'm 10 years older than she is because she's the teacher, okay? Yeah. And I'll call her and tell her, and one day someone thought that she was my daughter. It didn't take her five minutes to call me. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, <coughs> What about early rains? My sister tells me I need to tell more of this. So what I'm about to tell you, I'm not telling you from self-serving or bragging. I want you to know that. She says it will inspire and motivate others. Amen, brother. That's right. Let me go back. Several years ago, I was in Owensboro at Parish Avenue Baptist Church in Revival. Elsie Gray, who is dead was an evangelist, but he was back in the pastorate and he had me for revival. There was a man that was saved that week, 67 years old. L.C. let him give his testimony on uh, Thursday night. We extended another night. Man. Never will forget the man's testimony. Bud got up and he rambled. He said, normally... I would have been at the bingo hall last night, but I came to hear my brother and my niece see. And he said, tonight I came back for some reason. And he said, tonight would have been jackpot night, but I found a lot better jackpot here than I could have ever Amen. found at the bingo hall. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Now, seven years passes. I'm in uh, another town in Revival, and the pastor and I... Brother Wilbur Powell and I meet Elsie and Bud Westerfield at the Catfish House in Central City. And Bud sits there seven years later and cries. And he said, Brother Dale, it's been the best seven years of my marriage. Amen. The best seven years of my life. He said, I went on a short-term mission trip. Yes, Lord. And one day, 
When I get to heaven, Bud Westerfield will run up to me and give me a hug and say thank you. Because he said you didn't give up on the invitation that night. Amen. In Russia, I've been there for three mission trips. The first time led a man to the Lord. Second time back, you take peanut butter. They don't have peanut butter, and they love it. And that's one of my staples, okay? I like my peanut butter. But we would take it in all sizes, and when you'd visit the homes, you'd give them a small jar of peanut butter. You'd pack a whole suitcase with peanut butter. The second year, guess what? The man that we had led to the Lord was out there helping us go from house to house. Amen. That's some early rain. Now, I'm going to be preaching next week, next Sunday over at Nancy. They're without a pastor, and, and uh, they're independent Baptists. But uh, the deacon called me, and he said, do you have any Sundays free? I said, well, I've got next Sunday free. And I was in revival in northern Kentucky. He said, you probably don't remember me. He said, uh, I was at uh, Bernetta Baptist Church, and you preached it's bound to have been 20 years ago or better. He said, I recommitted my life, and it's caused me to get into discipleship and grow, and I'm a deacon, and I've got four kids, and we're serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's what it's I'm about. I'm going to give you another one or two. Now, uh, I led a waitress to the Lord in Cookville, Tennessee, at Olive Garden. The pastor and I had gone to get a load of trees and shrubbery for our lawn and garden business, and we stopped there to eat, and I led it to the Lord. So uh, over a year passes, and I'm preaching in Livingston, Tennessee, and my wife is with me and my daughter and son-in-law, and a couple takes us to Cookville 20 minutes away to eat at Olive Garden. And uh, I was talking with the waitress, and I noticed she asked my wife a strange question or two, and I thought, where is this coming from? I got deeper, and I started witnessing to her. She said, oh, I've been saved. I said, when was that? She said, at that table over there, you led me to the Lord. Amen. She yeah. said, it's changed my life and our family. We've got a Bible. We're reading it. We're praying. Amen. That's some early rain. Amen. Amen. Now, I was in the Owensboro area. <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and tell you. The guy fished, so I like to fish. Remember the fishing sermon I preached in 2019? Yeah. And this guy liked to fish, but he fished for catfish, so I could relate to him. He liked to fish. But he was better at the church. Angry. Had a right to be a preacher had stolen his wife. And other things had happened. But I led him to Jesus Amen. that day. The because I could talk to him about fishing. Amen. I'm at Bowling Green. Thank goodness Millie's with me. It's a church that had started. Elsie Gray's grandson, Kenny Rager. Have you met Kenny? I think so. You think so? But anyway, Kenny was pastor there at the time. And uh, we walk in and this lady runs up to me and gives me a big bear hug. <laughs> and I thought, what's going on? Who are you, lady? Glad my dad to the Lord and it was that man I could go on but I'm not going to I want you to know there's early rains and are we not glad of that Amen. now right here <coughs> Millie and I were able to go to uh, Italy for our 40th anniversary trip five and a half years ago the Milan Cathedral built in the latter 1600s early 1700s and they were having the dedication and there was a little girl that stood in the thrones of people and she pointed up and said, I helped to build that. I helped to build that. I helped to build that. One of the guards arrayed in his uniform knelt down and said, Honey, what did you do to help build that? She said, I carried my papa's lunch pail to him when he worked up yonder. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. There's a song we're getting ready, hopefully. There we go. That's the Lord.
and it's not coming through exactly right. So thank you for giving to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. There it goes. in Hebrews 11. Amen. These all died in faith having not received the promises but seeing them afar off and they were persuaded that the latter rains are coming. Amen. I can see it by faith. The latter rains Amen. are going to come. Amen. Brother Jordan, it's not easy being a pastor. But one day I can see he's going to walk up and put that crown on your head and say thank you my son for answering the call to preach. Won't that be a day? Amen. See, you've got to warn the unruly, comfort the feeble-hearted, care for those. It'll be a wonderful day one day, won't it? And then I see another one. Nikki's not here, but she's down there working in the children's church. And if she'd have been here, I was going to lay one on her head. I talked to a guy Friday, good friend of mine, another state, another section of the state, not this state, but another state, and he was talking about the pastor had been a great pastor, but his wife came to the point of wanting him to go back to earn more money in the secular field. Gave him fits. It takes a special person to be a pastor's wife. Amen. It's not easy. So one day, I see it by faith, he'll put a crown on her head. Sister Frances, I understand you're the rook queen. <laughs> but also I understand that you're faithful here. Amen. And people look to you for wisdom. And you'll place that crown on your head one day and say, thank you, my daughter, for being faithful to me. Amen. Won't that be a day? Amen. Brother Brandon, I understand that you teach and work with the youth. Young man committed to the Lord. And won't that be a day when he walks up and places that crown on your head and says, thank you, my son, for being faithful and giving yourself. What does the Bible say? Remember your Creator in the days of your youth when your days fell not and when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Isn't it time that we challenge our young people to surrender totally to the Lord? Amen. Brother Terry, Sunday school teacher, I'll have to come around behind. Faithful here. One day he'll place that crown on your head and say, Thank you, my son, for being faithful, for serving. Now, I, I understand that there's another Nikki, but it's Nikki Burke instead of Burks. And she left out for. Children's Church. And I understand she does whatever needs to be done. That's right. So he'll place that crown on her head. Now I've run out of crowns except one little crown in my box. But the Lord's not going to run out of crowns one day. Amen. He's going to have one for everyone that served. Whether it's on the soundboard, whether it's driving the bus, working with the kids, serving in the youth, whatever you've done, what did Jesus say? Whosoever shall give a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, I say unto you, in no wise shall they lose their reward. Amen. Now in Romans 16, when you study it, Paul lists 26 names. And then he lists two by no name. References them. I want you to know God takes notice. I've run out of crowns all at once.
one by one. <clears throat> one by one, red, yellow, black, and white. They're all precious in God's sight. Amen. Yes, and I right. want you to know the building that God's building is not made with sticks and stones, but it's made up of people. We are the church. Amen. The building's not the church. Amen. Amen. That's right. They're all precious in His sight. Won't it be a day? Amen. 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 Ladder reigns. One little crown left in here. I want you to know if I have a crown, there's not going to be one of you in front of me. Because in Revelation, the fourth chapter, I see four and twenty elders sitting on thrones on seats. And they have on their heads crowns of gold. This is fake stuff. I've got three hundred and something dollars in this fake stuff. But I want you to know it'll be the real McCoy 24 karat one day. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I see those four and twenty elders, and they rise off of those stones, off of those seats, and they take those crowns off of their head, and what do they do? They walk up to Jesus and lay them at the feet of Jesus. Amen. You're worthy to receive riches and honor and glory because you've created everything and you've created us. Right. And then I see in Revelation 5, they're praising him for creation in chapter 4. But in chapter 5, guess what? We're going, to, uh, we're going to worship him and praise him for our salvation. Not creation, but for our salvation and our redemption. I can't sing a lick now. You can. That's not fair. But one day I'll be able to sing that new song, Worthy is the Lamb to receive Amen. riches and honor and glory and majesty Amen. because He's redeemed us unto Himself Amen. out of every kindred, nation, and people, and every tongue. Amen. And how's He done it? By His blood. Amen. I'm working on a sermon on the blood. And let me tell you, neither is there salvation in anything else other than the blood of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. The blood is not gory, it's glory. You see the scarlet thread of redemption Amen. from Genesis through Revelation. Amen, that's right. <coughs> Amen. If I have a little crown, not a one of you going to get ahead of me. I'm going to be behind the 24 elders. And I'm going to walk up and I'm going to place that crown at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to adore him, and I'm going to look at the only man-made thing in heaven, the scars in his wrist and his feet and his side. And I'm going to say, Jesus, thank you for saving a wretch like that. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say thank you for calling me. Amen. And thank you Amen. for equipping me. And I want you to know something. It's not because of me. Paul said, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God right. who has made us able ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let yes. me tell you, we don't do it on our own. It's Him that does it through us. Amen. And the problem I have, I'm selfish with myself. And that brings me to the next thing. I said that this grain of corn has one of two choices. It can be selfish. If it's selfish, a mealworm eats into the kernel and eats the heart of it out and it's of no benefit. Or it can sacrifice itself. It's got potential. Amen. A lot of potential. See, Jesus said, said except a brain of wheat fall into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it shall bring forth much fruit. That's right. Paul said, I die daily. Amen. Isn't that the hardest thinking thing to do is to die to self? Amen. Amen. It is, isn't it? Amen. And sacrifice ourselves. Now potential. This one grain of corn in one growing season could produce two ears of corn somewhere between 1,300 and 50 to 1,500 grains of corn. Wow. Now that's potential, isn't it? Amen. 
But what about this ear of corn? If I've done my math correctly, if every grain of corn on this ear of corn would sacrifice itself and die in one growing season, it could produce 850 to 900,000 grains of corn. That's potential. Amen. Here's my question. What about in a congregation this size? What if every grain of corn, what if every heart would sacrifice themselves to the Lord? Amen. What could happen? That's right. You see, the Bible says in that he died for all, that those who live should no longer live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them and rose again. Amen. The question is, are we selfish or will we sacrifice ourselves? That's the big question, isn't it? Behold the husband who waits for the precious fruit of the earth. The farmer, until he receives the early and the latter rains. You're not just working for the Lord here and now. But one day, the latter rains will come. Thank God. Be patient, therefore, brethren. Establish your hearts. Because the coming of the Lord draws near. Hey, hang in there. Don't throw in the towel. Keep on keeping on serving the Lord. Amen. And Amen. surrender yourself yes. to it and see what it will be like one day. Amen. Let us stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking at you, but me and your pastor. Come on, brother Joe. How many of you can say today, I know that if I die, when he asks, what shall I do with you? You can say, I have trusted you, Jesus. Heaven is my home. You ask Jesus into your heart. You know he lives there. And when you die, heaven will be your home. Raise your hands big and high. Would you do that? God bless. Beautiful sight. Thank you. Now, as I looked around, hands could not go up. So, I want to challenge you. Jesus is knocking at your heart's door. I talked about the grain of corn can either be selfish or sacrifice itself. Jesus said, he that saves his life shall lose it, and whosoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. So, right now, I challenge you to lose your own self and let Jesus into your heart. I'm going to make that as simple as I know how. Right where you stand, you pray this simple prayer with me. This prayer never saved anyone. I could pray it a thousand times with you. It's faith, but this prayer can be an expression of your faith. Now, I'm going to pray it out loud. I'll pray it slowly and phrase by phrase. You pray it in your heart and in your mind, and you mean it. And there's a promise in God's word that says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. So right now, pray it with me. <laughs> Dear Lord Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've broken your commandments. Lord, I've said no to you before. I ask that you forgive me. Jesus, I know you died for me. Thank you for loving me so much to take my punishment and my hell. Lord, I believe that you was buried, but you rose again the third day. I know you're alive. You've spoken to my heart. I say yes to you today. I ask you to live in me. I need your power. Because I give my life to you. To live for you from this day forth. Lord, thank you for hearing me. Thank you for forgiving me. 
for saving my soul. Now, Lord, give me the courage to confess you publicly and not be ashamed of it. Yes, Lord. With every head still bowed, every eye closed, your pastor and I will be the only ones looking. We'll never come to you. We'll never embarrass you. But those of you who just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as Savior and Lord of your life, would you slip your hand up and say, yes, I prayed that with you. Thank you. I see those hands. Yes. You may slip them back down. Now the invitation, you can look up at me, everyone. The invitation's twofold. If you prayed that prayer, you come to Brother Jordan. We'll pray with you, counsel with you. I have a power pack to give to you to help you grow. If you did not pray that prayer and you're without Christ, you come. Don't let Satan talk you out of it. He'll tell you you'll make a fool of yourself with you today. Yes. But what about it, Christians? <laughs> Maybe you've got a crown and you feel that you need to come and kneel, sit at this front pew, one of these pews. I didn't have a crown to give to everyone, but you've got a grain of corn. And so would you come and put that grain of corn at this altar or on this Lord's Supper table saying, I am sacrificing myself this week and the rest of my life to be what you want me to be because I want to experience early rains and the latter rains to come. As we sing, you respond to God's Spirit. Come on. Number 187. If He's called you down today, you've been saved. You raised your hand. Come on down. Let us counsel with you today. Let us pray with you right now. Brother Dale, pray with you. Just invite you to come right now.
did not bring your grain of corn. Hang on to it. And I'll tell you why. Got a guy in this state. I ran into him at Sevierville, Tennessee at one of those shopping strips. He didn't come that Sunday, but he kept the grain of corn. And he gave his heart to Jesus. And when I ran into him at Sevierville, he still had it in his pocket. He said it caused me to give my heart to the Lord. He didn't do it that day, but he did it later. But you need to understand, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. So if you need to be saved, you come. But if you've not brought that grain of corn as a believer, there's still time. God's not finished with the invitation. One more verse. I'll turn it over to your pastor. <laughs> and never do a thing with it and you know and one day you might just reach in there and feel that and it'll remind you this message that God's laid upon his heart to put in your heart amen but I, I'm thankful for that you know anytime I go to plant brother Dale I expect it to grow every time every time I go out to preach I expect salvation every amen. time I, I go out to do something if I'm going to witness to somebody I'm expecting them to get saved I just am because I know what God can do it's not about the words I say it's not about what he says it's about what God can do right. now those words he said has pierced some hearts here today because I can see it on your faces and I can see how it's working in you and I'm thanking God for that but we're not done we're just getting started you want revival we got it amen it's amen. been here and uh, we're thankful for that and we're proud Brother Dale's going to be with us as long as the Lord leads amen if we need to go an extra night to get somebody saved amen we'll go an extra night yes. or, or two days or whatever but uh, we're going to lead it up to the Lord but um, for my gentlemen that are here today that are going to be baptized, if you guys will go ahead and start making your way back, I'll be back with you guys in just a second. 496. <laughs>
95 there. There's a land that is burning in the Don't, don't, no credit. 
I like to call it spiritual warfare. Yeah. So why he has bent me up to where I'm at today, and why he has, yeah, his grace I have made it through. I have seen all the battles of, of the spiritual warfare. So when I got him, now I know how easy they are to battle and conquer. They're easy to conquer. They are. Praise yeah. God. Don't have that roller coaster all the time. Praise God. And you know that just strengthens us in our faith Amen. for Him, right. and just and then, then that through the desire and the blessing that comes from Him, that's good for them. And if you're missing something, you get those, you know you missed them. Amen. Thank you all. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Chance, would you say what we've been saying for like the last? What's God doing? What's behold what? We got the Bibles right here. Amen. Behold, I'm doing a new book. Oh, he's doing a new thing. Hey, amen. Right. Listen, I um, what hindereth me to be baptized if I believe? Amen. You believe in Jesus today? Amen. Behold, I'm doing something new today. That fellow won't be baptized. He, he wants to be baptized and join the church. Well, praise God. Come in your way. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. everywhere and behold I'm doing a new thing guys listen if if somebody ain't going to do it Barnesburg Church is going to we're going to find a way to do it and I think people they ever I had a lady tell me one time she said I was wasting my time going out to the community inviting everybody to church she said statistically you should go after the children I said honey everybody needs Jesus everybody Amen. everybody and we knock on doors we go to door to door trying to tell people that God loves them and Jesus cares for them. we want the church to go to the community so the community get back to church amen, amen. amen. so we thank God this young man is he's coming here today amen and listen God's doing something here today amen, amen. amen. spirit is here brother Dale right. brought the word <laughs> the word is on your heart and life amen. amen we're gonna let him get ready here and Brother, you come on down. Amen. What's your name? Jason. Brother, God bless you, man. Just make my name right. Amen. Amen. This is Jason. He's going to come right over here. Just stand right here. I'm going to turn you right around. You want to say anything? I just want to say, man, I've been through a rough past. Bless the Lord. I just uh, want to give it up, man, and give up my pain. Amen. Amen. Give it to God, man. Amen. 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 Wasting your time. And I know God, has God said that to any, or has the devil said that to anybody this week? Amen. Amen. That you're wasting your time. Anything that you do, it's not worth it. But would you miss today for anything seeing these guys come up here and be baptized? I wouldn't miss that for nothing in the world. That just, that's revival right there. That's what revival is all about. And you know what? The devil beat me down all week and just trying to keep us away, keep us down, sickness and everything. But God is moving this week. Please, please, please make it a priority on top of the list to come back each and every time we have the doors up. Amen? Would you do that this week? If you can, if you, can, if you can't watch, amen? I know some people can't be here because of work and things. Pray for Brother Dale. I know that God's got more messages, and I pray that maybe Brother Mark, we're going to have to clean this thing out and do it again next week. Amen? amen. We may just leave the water in. Let's just do that. Amen? Let it run. 
Anybody else got anything? Brother Dale, go ahead. Brother Jordan mentioned that. I read an article yesterday. I was with a young preacher a few years ago. On Facebook, he posted that he's giving up on the ministry, 40 years old. It's not easy. But I'm so proud of this guy, Tommy Floyd. I said, how's things going at Barnesburg? He said, Jordan's doing a great job. Yeah. And I told Jordan, I'm proud of you. And you encourage him and pray for him. Like I said, being a pastor is not easy. It's very difficult. It's very tough. But just just hold his arms up like they had to Mos hold Moses' arms up, okay? Amen. And uh, just do that. We're proud of him. Thank you. Uh, pray for me that I'll know the message is to preach the rest of the week, okay? Amen. I only preached one today, I promise you. <laughs> Sometimes I'll come in with seven outlines and not know which one. You don't want me to preach all seven at one time. Yeah. <laughs> 